It was 1938, and Tijuana was a typical border community of 19,000. The quiet town was quickly flourishing into a thriving community of commerce by day and a risky nightlife after sunset. But on February 13, 1938, things changed. The residents of Tijuana were shocked when eight-year-old Olga Camacho of the well-respected Camacho family was raped and murdered. In life, Olga had been a pretty green-eyed girl who was as comfortable playing with her dolls as she was listening to a sermon in church. What's more, her family lived in the heart of the city, which happened to be where the army fort was located. People felt secure, so much so that on the afternoon of February 13th, Olga's family sent the little girl to the store to pick up meat for dinner. She never came back. The search for Olga started almost immediately after her disappearance. Everybody got involved. The family, the police, and the community. Eventually, Olga's body was found next to a small garage. Her throat had been slashed. Her body showed signs of sexual abuse before and after she was killed. Although Olga's sister, Concepcion Camacho, had not yet been born, she remembers hearing stories. Nunca preguntábamos nosotros. Sabíamos que una hermanita había muerto conforme íbamos creciendo. Pues nunca preguntábamos porque sabíamos que había sido una tragedia. Nunca, detalles, nunca. Fuimos sabiendo por las primitas, por los tíos. Authorities immediately arrested five suspects including Army Private Juan Castillo Morales, a 24-year-old soldier from the southern state of Oaxaca. The same day he was arrested, his own wife turned in incriminating evidence against him, his blood-soaked uniform. Local investigators, along with FBI forensic experts from San Diego, gathered even more evidence against Castillo Morales, unexplained scratches on his neck, his footprints at the scene of the crime, and fibers from the sweater he was wearing under the dead girl's nails. And there was this. His fingerprints were all over the package of meat Olga had picked up from the store. Castillo Morales knew he was trapped. He finally confessed. The townspeople were enraged and riots broke out. Police headquarters and city hall went up in flames. Several people were injured during the melee. The army tried Castillo Morales. After finding him guilty, it applied what it considered a just and quick sentence, the runaway law, or la ley fuga, a law which allowed condemned men like Castillo Morales to flee before a firing squad, only to be shot in the back while attempting to escape. The execution was open to the public. Over the years, the image of Castillo Morales changed. Through a quirk of fate, the convicted killer is now considered by thousands as a patron saint of undocumented immigrants and protector of the poor. Hace dos años, mi hijo me habían dicho que estaba muy grave el corazón y fui de doctor en doctor hasta que alguien me dijo que que si creía en Juan Soldado, yo no no lo había oído de él y este y me trajeron y vine y le pedí y cuando fui de vuelta con los doctores a hacerle estudios a mi hijo ya estaba bien. No, resultó que no era grave el corazón como me habían dicho, que era una alergia. Y se le quitó. Y creí, de, desde ahí vengo. The transformation of Castillo Morales, now referred to lovingly as Juan Soldado or Juan the Soldier, may have to do with the version of those who believe in his innocence. Many are convinced that he was framed after his general raped and killed Olga. Others say Castillo Morales was nothing but a cold hearted killer and find it offensive to see his tomb treated like a shrine. Mi familia tiene mucha fe en él. A mi hermano le concedió un milagro que le pidió de todo corazón y no pierdo las esperanzas de que el día de mañana me me lo conceda a mí también. Segura estamos que Juan Soldado tuvo que ver, ¿verdad? Estuvo involucrado directamente y que es culpable y no aceptamos Y nunca lo vamos a aceptar que lo esté venerando, jamás. Que le recen a cualquier otro santo. Pero ese no es santo. But year after year, new and old followers keep coming. Many of Juan Soldado's believers are Catholics, yet the Catholic Church has never considered him a saint. 
Father Antonio Plasencia says the church tolerates the worshiping, but does not condone it. Pues se respeta, se, como toda persona, ¿verdad? Sin embargo, no es reconocida por la iglesia, para absolutamente para nada, ¿verdad? Para nada, porque pues está todavía muy difícil su situación, ¿verdad? A veces este, suele suceder mucho eso en la historia, cuando alguien comete un mal, tratar por otro lado de resaltarle virtudes para ocultar aquel mal, ¿no? Y pues a veces la justicia no es muy clara por ahí. Only one thing seems clear. Whether Juan Soldado was evil or not, thousands of followers from Mexico and the United States believe. Mm -hmm.